So I come from the West Coast of the United States where anything that's 100 years old is really, really old. So it's fun to, <laughs> to be here where we hear about the, the way that the, uh, the city of Paris has evolved over many centuries and uh, carrier pigeons and now a 125-year-old company. And, um, and I know that we got just a couple minutes over, but these two are from Switzerland and informed me that they have exactly 22 and a half minutes and then they want to get to want to get to beers. So welcome these two for our final talk of the day. Thank you. We should be in time. Uh, thanks for coming to this talk about the really long journey to an API community of practice in a 125 years old insurance company. As you can guess, I'm not a native speaker, so please be kind with my, my pronunciation. What we're going to present tonight, this afternoon, is true, but is not the truth. It's just the share of an experience that we lived with Julien since we start working at the Vaudois Assurance. So let me just introduce ourselves. We have Julien, which is, who is a mathematician. He is the father of Olivia. He's, he plays squash very well and is a geek. I'm Jerome, I'm a software developer, I'm brewing my own beer, playing golf, and I'm a geek as well. You can reach us on LinkedIn or just come to the talk, after the talk, to discuss with us. As uh, already said, we come from, from Switzerland, from the French part, and we work for an insurance company, which is quite medium-sized, with 1,500 employees. And next year, we are going to celebrate it's 125th birthday. <laughs> As it's a quite old company, you can imagine that the IT is quite old too. We still have a mainframe, we still have COBOL developers, and we have to manage this legacy on, in our daily business. It starts small with a team of three people, and now it grew up to something like 180 people for the IT. About the IT organization, we have two interesting Facts. The first one, the half of the IT has been engaged after 2015. On the other end, you've got an average employee seniority of more than 10 years. It means that you have to manage two, two generations of developers, two generations of mentalities, two, gener two generations of practices. With Julien, we start working at the Vaudoise in 2015. And in October 2015, we start discovering how the APIs looks like at the Vaudoise. And we have problems. Every single API we were looking for was a mess, was a nightmare. I've got two examples. The first one, the data source. For a single data source, a team need to consume, they create a, an API. And it's cool, it's working. The problem is when a second team need to consume the same data, they will create their own API. And it could get worse, because another team needs to consume the same data, so they copy the data and they create their own API. And the worst case at the Vaudois was when the data has been copied or duplicated 14 times. So you can easily imagine the nightmare it could be when you update a single of this data and the regression that could be created of that. On the other end, the APIs itself. There were no consistency. A mix-up of French and English, a mix-up of XML inside JSON, no consistency in the naming, no, consist no consistency everywhere. And the worst case was even an override of the HTTP 200 KO, which is not a typo. <laughs> so to summarize, at this moment, the APIs were, were duplicated for almost each consumer which was bad, definitely hard to consume because there were no signature, no documentation. You don't know what you can have as a, you don't know what you can have as a result when it works, and you can you have no idea of what you will get. you have no idea of what you will get when there is an error. 
there were no consistency in the naming. Sometimes this field is named something, sometimes the same field is named differently. And finally, for me, the worst case was the override of the HTTP basics. With Julien, we continue working at the Vaudoise, and a year later, we decide that we have to do something about those API, about this nightmare. And with four other guys in our own unit, we create a wiki page, and we start describing what we need, what we expect for an API that we want to consume, and for an API that we want to create. It was quite basic. When I, when I want to retrieve some data, I want to use a get. When I want to create some data, I use a post. The default encoding is UTF-8. When I get an HTTP 400, I've got this content type. And we describe the basic guidelines. And it's cool, because we solved the very first problem about the, the mess, about the nightmare, nightmare. We had an API guideline that is used in our own unit, and it solved a problem, but it's not over yet. Luckily, a few months after that, the top management of the Vaudois decide to go in a deep, agile transformation. They engage some coach, and they decide to use the SAFE framework. The SAFE framework describes a lot of things, and we don't care at this moment. There is one thing which is important. It's the community of practice, COP. And it gives a definition for that, that we can summarize in six points. It's an organized group of people that share a common interest in a specific technical domain, that want to share information, that want to improve their skills, and finally, that want an autonomy. And that was exactly what we were in our own unit. So we created a wiki space for the community of practice and the wiki page for the API community of practice. We start having some meetings, so we share the meeting notes publicly, and to be contact, to be reachable, we create a distribution list for the offline messaging and a Skype chat room for the online messaging. So everyone in the company could reach the community of practice, and everybody inside the community of practice could contact the other members. About the members, we had different groups that are described by the SAFE framework. The first one is the transactional group. It means that this guy, Julien, is interested in the community of practice of the APIs, but he don't want to be involved in a daily basic stuff. He just wants to have information when we do something, when we decide something, he wants to be informed. Then we have the occasional one group. Those four, three guys want to be involved, but only when we think, when the community thinks they can bring something to us. Except that they just want to have some information and they don't want to be involved in a daily basis. Then we have the most important group, the active one. Those four people want to be involved in a daily basis. They want to decide about the APIs, they want to improve their self, they want to share information and teach the other people in the, in the company. And finally, we have the core team with Julien and Stuart. We, we are there not to to decide, we are not the, the decider of the community, we are just the leader. It means that we run the community, we book the room, we take some meeting notes, we help people when there is a conflict and this kind of stuff. So we are not there not to decide, but to help. And that's really important. So we had a day-to-day -day basis for the community of practice and we have some people eager to learn and share more about the APIs. We had some meetings that are publicly uh, accessible on our wiki, so we are really transparent about what we are doing, what we decide, what we discuss, and we are really open-minded because every person in the company could join the, com the community of practice. To join the, com to join the community of practice, he just has to edit the wiki page and had his name, and, in will, and he will be involved as he wants. And finally, we have the leaders that run the community of practice, and they will spend a lot of energy about that. 
So we solve a new problem. We pass from an, arch an anarchic group of people in their own unit to something recognized at the company-wide level. Something known, something recognized, and that's cool. It's all a new problem, but it's not over yet. And we have to talk about the adoption. So thank you, Jerome. As you said, we have around 11 people in this community of practice, but 11 people is not enough. So we would like to see how we go from no one is interested by the community of practice to much more adoption. So what did we do? I'm sure all of you know this technology adop adoption curve. On the very left side, you have the innovators and the early adopters. Then you have the whole majority. And for us, we only touched these kind of people. And it's very easy to get these people inside the community of practice of API because they already know. They are already interested by your cause. So we want to touch the whole majority. What did we do? So we had three kinds of people. The first kind of people is IT managers. Then you have the product owners and the developers. So we talked to these three kinds of people and we started by the IT management. We went to them and we asked for freedom to technical leaders because if you want to have a community of practice about API and you want to have leaders, they need to have time. They need to have time just to, as Jerome said, book the room, make it living. If they don't have time, it's never going to work. It's never going to leave. So ask freedom to technical leaders. Then we ask for legitimacy because if you have a community of practice and it's just a group of people in a room and they just talk about APIs, well, it's good. It's a good start. But it's not enough. We want these people to be able to decide, especially when they have to take tough decisions. So we ask for legitimacy for this group of people, this community of practice about APIs. And we ask also to them support, because it's been three years now, and it's been a, it's been a long journey. And at some point, you want your management to come to you and say, what you do is good for the company. Please keep doing it. So you need to ask support from, from, from your management. Then we went to the product owners, and we all know that a product owner knows that a feature costs that amount of money. So we went to these people, and it, we tried to explain them that if you have a community of practice, if you have guidelines, in the long run, it's going to cost less money. So with that uh, argument or, or um, thing, they understood that it had value. Then we also discovered that if you have guidelines that are recognized across the whole IT and not just guidelines or standards that have been made by two geeks in their office and they say, yeah, it's the thing you should do, it's never going to work. But if you have guidelines that are recognized, then product owner can rely on it. They trust it. They trust the developers when they say, yeah, OK, it takes a bit more time in the beginning, but in the long run, it's going to cost less money. So if you have guidelines recognized, good thing. And the last point is you have to talk about your community of practice about API all the time to these kind of people. Because if you are in a very old company like us, well, first thing, API, they don't know, they don't care. Second thing, community of practice, they don't care. So you need to talk about it all the time. Could be at the coffee machine, could be on a lunch, could be on a meeting, could be anywhere. Just talk about, talk about it anytime. Then developers, and for the same reason, if you are in a very old company like ours, you need to communicate about the existence of the community of practice. You don't have the choice. Because you have, as Jerome said, people who've, who have been working for 30 years in the company. They don't care about your community of practice. They don't know what it is. Talk about it anytime. Uh, could be on a town hall meetings, could be on a blog post. Whatever you can think, talk about it. Oops, sorry. And then you have to train these people. So first thing, you want to train people about APIs. They want people to learn more, more about APIs. Do trainings. And you are going to start, and you are going to organize optional trainings, of course. You will have people interested. They will come. There is a big chance that they are the innovators and the early adopters. But you want more. And this is when you need your support from your management. You need to have your management saying, yes, this training is mandatory. You don't have the choice. You've been working for 20 years in the company. You have to come. You have to learn new stuff about APIs. Thank you. There, there is a community of practice. They can teach you stuff. Use it. Then you can organize fun events. If you want people joining a cause, uh, it's much better if you do it in a fun way. So you could 
do simple stuff. You just buy croissant and you invite people and you talk about APIs. Very easy. You could also organize something we did last year. You do an advent calendar, the 24 days before Christmas. Every single day you have one question about API. You have people answering the, answering the question about APIs, and in the end you have winners, and you give them prizes. And thank you API Days Paris 2018. So last year they organized a maze, which we did, and uh, luckily we could get the code on GitHub, and we organized the same thing on our company. We had over 30 people who participated uh, this maze. They answered, they answered questions about API. And we had two winners. And the two winners, you know what prize they won? They are here in this room. So, <laughs> hello, guys. <laughs> Thank you for the light. Did we mention to communicate a lot? It's important. Uh, it's, it's not going to happen in, a, in one day. It takes a long time. Talk about it all the time. At Vaudois, we had something like this. We have roughly eight IT managers. 15 product owners and 80 developers. So to convince eight IT managers and 15 product owners was quite okay. Because you can go individually to these people, you convince them, you explain them. It takes a long time, but it's okay. Problem for us was to go and to reach 80 people. Jérôme and I, we cannot go to 80 people individually and convince them that APIs and community of practice is good. It's very hard, so it's still a non going fight, I would say, but it's for us the hardest group of people to convince. So, even though we don't have the whole company in our community of practice, I'll give you numbers later, we have much more adoptions and we have legitimacy. So, a new problem is solved, but it's not over yet. Because we think it's not that easy. It's not that easy because it has to be a bottom-up approach. It cannot be some manager saying, hey, you and you, you do a group of people calling community practice. Eh? Yeah, well, it's not going to work. You need to have natural leaders for the day-to-day -day of the community of practice. These people will fight for the cause because they believe that's the right thing to do. But at some point, you need sheriffs. And in our company, sheriffs are management. You need management saying, yes, they have the truth, they can decide, and you don't have the choice. I think I said 15 times to communicate, so do it. We also discovered that it's been three years, and over three years, motivation decreases over time. And we think the reason is that at the very beginning of the community of practice, we knew why we were running a community of practice. We knew why, why we were doing guidelines, but we think that the people who joined don't know anymore. So we would like to work on it in the next couple of months, just to make sure that we know why we do it, and also that the people know why, why we do it. And the problem will never be solved, for sure, because you have people li leaving the company, you have new people joining the company, you have the management changing, new CTO, new whatever. It's never going to be solved. It's something, it's an ongoing fight, you never have to give up, and we, with Jérôme are not going to give up because we think it's very important. Before leaving you, we would like, it, we would like to give you a couple key numbers that we are quite proud of. The first one is, as of today, we have 33 members to our community of practice. As you can see, you have the names here. It's, for us, a big amount of people. We now have guidelines. The version is 1.1. They are available on GitHub. Please go check it out. Do us feedback. It would be great. And what is important is to build these guidelines. We had over 15 people, 15 contributors, who made these guidelines happen. It's not, as I said, two geeks in their office saying, yeah, it's the right thing to do. It's never going to work. 15 people helped us build these guidelines. It's very good. We had over 20 meetings just to, well, do these guidelines, answer questions, uh, just talk about APIs. And as of today, we have over 30 APIs that respect our guidelines. You think that 30 APIs is a big number? Well, it's good. It's a very good start, but at Vaudoise, we have over 100 APIs, so we still have to keep fighting, which we will do. Um, the last point is very important to us, because as a community of practice, this group of people, we thought that doing API design review before implementation was a good thing. It's a good process to have. So what did we do? We asked support from the management, which we had, 
And then, as of today, we are able to have this process in place. And we had over 47 reviews of API design before implementation. And it's, it was not an easy task, but I think it adds great value to the company. It's everything we had to tell you tonight. Thank you very much. Do not hesitate to come to us and talk. It's just, it was the true, but not the truth, as Jérôme said. Before you come on stage, please grab your phone, go on www.menti.com, use that code, give us feedback. It's the second time we do a talk. If you can give us feedback about the content, about the speakers, about Jérôme, about anything you want, it would help us a lot. Thank you very much. Very good. I think I could watch that animation of you collaborating on that document all day. That <laughs> Not that you weren't entertaining, but, <laughs> but that I, I could have just kept staring at. Do we have a... J just saying, Sorry. 22 minutes and a half. Very good. <laughs> See? W well done. Do we have a... Have any hands out you, here? You want beers, right? That's... Yeah. <laughs> I know. That's the, that's the mood of the audience. There's one. So you, you mentioned a community of uh, practice, and then uh, people must be involved, but people have also their daily work. And then you said, uh, okay, we ask the manager, so they have time to work on it, etc. But how do they, do you have rules about it exactly? Or? So it's uh, it, in the SAFE framework, it's self-organized, so you join if you want to join, if you want to be part of this group of people, just make it living. But at some point, thanks to the support of the management, we were able to do processes, to do rules, to do guidelines, and the people not involved in the, in the community of practice have to follow it. So I think it's very good to, just to get the people interested, they build a future, future, and the other people, they just have to follow it. If you want to be part, you can join. If you don't want, you just follow the rules. Does it answer your question? It looks easy like that, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. So, so, you know, yeah, but saying it like this just looks easy because uh, people will do, maybe the most motivated people will do it on their free time. Maybe they can stay later or come yeah. between lunchtime or whatever. But the others? Yeah. Uh, as I said, uh, maybe it's not clear, but it's been three years. And it's three years of talking about it almost every day. And it's not something that is easy. We just spend so much energy because we think it's the right thing to do. We didn't want us to decide about the future of API at Vaudoise because we don't think we are the most uh, skilled people. But bringing people together was the key thing. And I think after three years, we kindly managed it. Well, it's not perfect, but it's a good start. It looks like so. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> At the very beginning, it, take us, it took us a lot of time to, to, re, to prepare the very first version of the API guidelines. I know it's quite stable and we have less meetings to define new rules, new guidelines and update them. So the process has become easier to manage because yeah. we, we don't have to invest a lot of time right now. We have to communicate, but we are, don't have uh, to be 20 people, meetings, and this kind of stuff right now. All right, anyone want the last question of the day? You don't have to. No. <laughs> All right. There it is. Thanks. For me, as for developer, it's very interesting. How do you manage the mess that you had at the beginning? Did you refactor it, or you just built the, it from scratch with new guidelines and new technologies and everything? The answer is like 20 hours long, I think. So I give it to you. <laughs> it depends. For some APIs, we write some kind of proxy to expose something which is cleaner. To some of them, we create new APIs to consume the data. We try to deprecate the old ones. 
and we communicate, hey, there is a microservice that exposed the agencies of the road was. This is there. Don't use this 14 source of data anymore. And it took time, and time, day after day, we had a new base of clean APIs. Our strategy, strategy was more, we provide something clean for the consumers. We don't care how messy it is behind, but for the consumers, it's good. And then in the long run, we're going to do something for the back end, let's say. But it's, it's going to take 20 years, so we still have work to do. All right, thank you very Thanks. much. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks.